Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you on Facebook? Hi. It's Happy Tuesday, right? Why not? And I think it's going to be a super happy Tuesday because I am very excited about what we're going to talk about today. And I want to say a special hello to everybody on the Zoom webinar and say thank you for being here. You really uh, inspire me by the stories you share with me, by what's happening in your life. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And for anyone who is watching this on YouTube after we have filmed it, welcome. It's a virtual hall. This virtual hall is filled with that energy, that universal energy that doesn't dissipate. When you open the field, there it is. It's always there. I mean, I spent 40 years in research and then in, in study and trials with people all over the world. And if there's one thing I saw again and again and again, is you can't hold back that universal energy by whatever name you want to give it. It's powerful. It's there with you. All you have to do is connect to it and allow it to expand. So I want you to sit back, relax, enjoy yourself, and open to that experience of that igniting power in you. Today, what we're going to talk about is real talk, how to be the best you. How to be the best you. That doesn't mean you're not a great you right now. <laughs> but we all want to keep evolving, right? Of course we do. We all want to keep growing and expanding. So how do we do that? So that's what we're going to talk about. And wherever you are from any part of the world, anytime you want to pop in something, tell us hello where you are, please do that. I love saying hi to you and finding out what's going on. And I thank you for all the emails and the different things you send us that keep me informed of everything happening out there because we are really together in this, aren't we? And having this kind of a community is so important to everything that we do in our lives. If there's anything I can say in something that I have also learned during this time of COVID is the importance of our being together. Because as an author, uh, as a transducer, as someone who has lived the last 15 years in a much more solo uh, situation, more isolated in a sense. It's that I go between, it's kind of like a muse, uh, an artist. You go from the quiet to suddenly being with thousands of people. Then you go from the quiet to suddenly being with large groups of people. And for me, it's that connection to people that really feeds me, as well as the quiet. So we really need both in our lives, because if you're only pouring out, being with people, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, you're not giving yourself that time to ignite that power that you have, to recognize what's going on in your life, and to keep instilling more and more of that remarkable field of mind and body intelligence to support you day after day after day and in each moment, right? So again, today's talk is how to be the best you. Every single one of us is born with human potential. Everyone, no one is left out. And regardless of your circumstances, you have the potential already packed in to be the best you you could possibly be to discover what your purpose is, to allow yourself to live a life that is remarkable, enjoyable, where you have the ability to thrive in each moment. So you're not just constantly reaching for new goals, although that does make the joy of the journey fun. It's also about recognizing what you have and appreciating what you have and being the best you. 
Now, sometimes it feels like we're not on the same playing field because some people have the good fortune of loving parents who wanna give you everything they possibly can. Brilliant teachers who are here to ed educate you about everything that you wanna learn. Wow, that is fantastic. And that is a gift that will absolutely benefit your life in so many ways throughout your entire life. But some of us didn't have that kind of background, didn't have that kind of nurturing. In fact, just the opposite. You know, it's like being a tree or a flower. You need certain nutrients to grow. You need the sunshine, you need rain, you need nutrients in the soil, and as you get these elements, that kernel, that seed inside, can go from being this big to a remarkably beautiful, strong tree, or a remarkably aromatic flower. So we need these nutrients in our lives. But the good news is, is we have a way to give them to ourselves. So if there is no one nurturing you, or even if you've had the most loving parents ever, you've had experiences that have made you feel less than, that have made you maybe not have the courage you wish you had, not be as intelligent as you wish you were, not be as pretty or handsome as you wanted to be. You have something so special that will grow those talents and that actually expands that beauty <laughs> and, and, and that handsomeness you have, right? Because you know, when I went to Hollywood, when I was first there, and I'll never forget it, you know, you're surrounded by such gorgeous people, okay? They're gorgeous. Gorgeous women, beautiful bodies, stunning men, the whole thing. I went into this restaurant. I was very young. I was in my early 20s. And I saw this table of probably they were all models. Oh my God, they were so gorgeous. And I felt myself having that, you know, jealousy. Oh, why couldn't I look like that? Why couldn't I be like that? And I sat, I was seated in the table next to them. And after listening to the conversations they were having, <laughs> I went, you know, I don't think I'm so bad off. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, I don't think that's what my goal is, you know, and nothing, and I'm not saying that about all models, believe me, there's extraordinary human beings. I'm not even saying about the human being, but sometimes like they hadn't had the opportunity to access their potential. So they had stopped already with, wow, I'm beautiful. So I'm going to make a lot of things happen in life because of that. But they hadn't accessed that power that shines through us. Do you know how beautiful we become when we are accessing that energetic intelligence because it just shines through us. We're more vital. We're healthier. We're more alive, right? Just like the tree and the flower as they're growing and blooming and becoming so remarkable. That's who we are. And so we're on a common ground, right? All of us, we're on a common ground. And now what's time to do, what it's time to do is create the mold of the person you want to become. That's not negating who you are right now. You already are amazing. You've probably already done remarkable things in your life. And don't you want to evolve? And possibly there are still characteristics you have you're not really happy about. 
So if you're creating that mold, you get to create the characteristics you want. You get to grow the values that you want to have more of. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, what I want you to also understand is this potential that I'm speaking of, again, could be under layers of ancestral genetic trauma. The more we understand about genetics, we can recognize the scientists, there's a lot of science out there already today about genetics in the way that the environment of a person affects them. So if you're going through a war, if you're going through being bullied, if you're going through uncertain times that frighten you, those thoughts are messengers going into your body. And those messengers sit in the cells of your body and that can be passed on to the next generation. And it could skip a generation and go to the generation after that. So we're coming into this world with remarkable human potential that a lot of it is covered up. It's blocked from all the stress of today and possibly some of the trauma that has been passed down to us. So this is why creating a mold of who we want to be and having the tools that begin to diminish that trauma so we can really step into that mold and be that person is so essential. And guess what? You don't have to rely on anybody to do that. You have the tools. You can have the tools if you don't have them. Let's put it that way. And that's something I discovered uh, through my 40 years of research and, and trials with people all over the world. And that's what we're going to go into today. So regardless of your situation, and you could be going through a very tough time right now. I want you to know what's available to you is remarkable and it can shift your life in a very short amount of time and then it can support you for the rest of your life. So let's begin with one of the most wonderful tools that there is in, in the SOS method. It's the meditations that ignite that power, that energy field of potential that exists in every one of us so that we can experience it and grow it day by day, okay? So today and afterwards, we'll be doing one of these tools that help build the mold of who we wanna become. So let's begin now with the SOS meditation that's called Say Yes. So you can close your eyes, relax. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> okay, Say Yes is actually a meditation you can do with your eyes open. But I would say for today, just close your eyes so you can feel how it makes you feel, okay? It's a brief meditation, but we don't need that much time to ignite and fuel that power we have. So let's begin now. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. When I look for love, I find it. When I look for beauty, I see it. 
So notice how you're feeling in this moment. <sighs> notice the shift in your body or your state of mind. See what that feels like. Mm. Then you want to take that experience back into your day. And when you can, slowly and gently open your eyes. So how are you feeling? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> say yes, say yes, say yes. It's hard to say yes when you're feeling depleted. It's hard to say yes when you feel mentally drained. It's hard to say yes when you doubt yourself and your abilities. This is why making a practice of doing these igniting meditations daily can shift your life. And you can go from the ones that create instant vitality to those that soothe you, to those that begin to cleanse the past more than others. So all of them will ignite that power and they each have different qualities to bring out different qualities of what you're asking for in your life. And every time you do one, you will notice a shift. Mm. So I wanna talk about that from the point of view of how you're feeling and in your own life, okay? And what does it take to be you? What does it take to be you? Do you need to have a drink to feel more like you? To, to have your personality come out more? Do you feel like you're not courageous enough to allow your personality to come out without a drink or some drug or some something might look like a crutch of some sort but when you do it you see you you are really being you but are you are you is that the real you Hmm. You know, maybe you're reacting from negative self-talk. Maybe there's a set of beliefs you have, which are just thoughts that you think that were told to you again and again and again, and your mind, your mind accepted them as truth, as fact. So, you can't find the real you because it's got so many layers of other opinions and points of view piled on the top. So, it's scary to be you. It feels vulnerable. You don't feel courageous, you feel frightened. Maybe frightens good for some people and for other people it's like you just don't feel powerful enough so that's why adding something to you allows that personality to come out but we're in the midst of creating the mold of who you want to become so that you can have a drink and enjoy yourself but you're not doing it to be you 
You can be you without anything attached. Maybe there's layers and layers of past beliefs that you're not even aware of because the difficult times that happen to us actually go into the subconscious so we can't see them anymore. So I know this for myself and I know it because of the many case studies and what happened to people. There are layers that I had personally from my father's negative talk about who I was. And even though I told him I didn't believe it, no, I wasn't that, some of that stuff sank in. And it caused me to be very self-conscious and very, um, I just didn't have the ability to do a lot of things because of my own concerns of being vulnerable. I don't want to be vulnerable. People will walk on me. They've done it before, they'll do it again. I have to be strong. But that's a false sense of bravado. Do you know what I mean? It's false sense of bravado. What you have inside is so much more powerful. And what happens is, what I discovered for myself is, I can be vulnerable, which means to me, I can be caring, loving, except that I'm not perfect in the way that I thought I wanted to be. But I have this core of strength that is amazing. It's more powerful than any other bravado I used to have. So who is that person you want to be? What is the mold you want to create for yourself? You know, no matter what has happened in your past, and even if you're not aware of anything in this moment, believe me, from the genetics and what's been passed down, there's stuff down there that you want to clear out. Because the evolved you will be able to have more rapid solutions in life when difficult times happen. We'll be able to tap into creativity more rapidly. We'll recognize when things aren't going well and to go back to those tools that you have to put them back in place. It's almost like these tools become a philosophy of the way you live your life. So that when you feel yourself not being in your power, you know to go and get one of those tools that will put you back into power the power of the possibility of five, looking at five possibilities, we've done that. Um, you know, stop, drop, and roll, that get you out of that anger and frustration when your body is blowing up, right? So there's a whole variety of tools you can grab that pretty soon become the way you live your life. You don't have to react anymore. You're coming from this new place of knowing how to respond to life in a whole new way because that's who you've created yourself to be. Mm. So how about getting out uh, a paper, a pen, your computer, your phone, wherever you want to type this. We actually have that space inside the SOS Method app as well. There's a journal there and you could type it inside a journal in the journal. So I want you to think about this. We are going to work on developing the mold of the person you know you are or the person you are becoming. So what are the qualities this person has? Is it more courage? Are you capable of doing what you commit to because you have the courage to do it? Is it more perseverance? Because when you commit to something, you're going to persevere to keep opening the door to see it happen. Is it creativity? You know, do you recognize, does this person recognize that they are limitless in their abilities and in their talents? So they don't get stopped by losing a job? No, another door could open. They have a multitude of talents. Which one is supposed to be happening in life in this moment? So even having to deal with 
a pandemic becomes insightful because it's demonstrating who you are when you step outside of your fears and concerns and be the person you're meant to be, you are becoming. So let's begin with this. The three steps in every single SOS method tool are explore, listen, engage, right? Explore. And by the way, if you don't capture all of this now, you can go to YouTube and do it again. Okay, listen to it in YouTube and really take the time to do this because this will change your life. This one tool will transform your life. Okay, here we go. Explore. Develop the mold of the person you know you are. The person you are becoming. What are the qualities this person has? What are the qualities? So even as I'm speaking this now, just start writing. It's fast, don't, don't have to think about it. What do you want? Courage, creativity, perseverance, compassion, humor. What are the qualities you wanna see in yourself every day? Does this person recognize they are limitless? That's a quality. I wanna live knowing I am limitless. I have talents that are limitless. I have capabilities that are limitless. What is it that I want to develop today? Who do I want to be, right? Will this person tear down walls of beliefs that have held them in place, being less than they are. So write these things down. Who is this person you see yourself becoming? What is the mold? I did this years ago. And believe me, the different qualities I have today than when I started and began that is huge. <laughs> it's one place I go. It's huge. <laughs> okay, so this is great. So when you're doing this, as we only have a limited time today, well, we're not limitless, but I want to contain it within the time that we have to allow you to come back and do this again because you want to give yourself even a little bit more time, play music in the background, listen, dream, write those qualities down, right? Okay, maybe you already have written some of them now. Then the second step is listen. Listen. That's always going to be the second step in SOS method tools and technology, okay? Why? Because it's that energy field, that igniting energy field that takes our intention, our thoughts and words, and fuels them to becoming reality so that we begin seeing new realities sooner than we can even imagine. Wow. So listen and ignite your potential with an immersive SOS meditation that consistently elevates your spirit, that consistently ignites that potential in you to become a part of you, to elevate you and to advance that mind intelligence, that body intelligence to support you to be the person you are becoming. And then the third step is engage. How do you step into that mole? What showed up for you when you were in the meditation? Did you already start getting ideas? Did you get inspiration? Did things come to you? If it didn't happen in that moment, look for the messages for the rest of the day and during the week. They are there. 
they always come in the middle of the night, a word a child says to you, your spouse says to you, your partner says to you, the messages will come. Write them down so you're clear they're happening and then take action. You have to take action on everything that comes so that you can really begin to see the fruits of your abilities, right? So let me just share with you that one of our community shared with me something that happened just in the last week. So last week we did pivoting for financial success. And it turned out that only the day before her husband lost his job. Ah, oh, that's hard. And earlier this year, he lost his mother. She passed away. Ah. Oh. So one thing after the next, I mean, it's piling on, isn't it? It's piling on. And I said to her, you know, sometimes these things happen because there is something else that's supposed to open. Maybe he's always dreamt of doing something else for a living and he hasn't had the courage to do it. He's a breadwinner, just like you, but he's a breadwinner. He wants to make sure he's got money coming in. And I'll say, you know, what I discovered for myself is sometimes you can't, you can't do something entrepreneurial immediately unless you already have some money stocked away, <laughs> sock 